Hi, I'm Ryan West, and I'm at Dungeon Beach in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I'm working with the White Lines remix by Chon Zodero, and I've got a guitar track that, well, it sounds pretty cool by itself, I just didn't think it was fitting in the mix. I want you to take a listen to it. It's an amplified guitar track that had a microphone on it. My guess is like a 57 or something, pretty close, on a small speaker in a smallish room. So take a listen to it raw. This is it just as it was recorded, just as it was given to me. Yeah, that sounds okay, and while that might work in a number of different mixes, I didn't feel like it was working in mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up this Amp Simulator plugin, and I'm going to mess around with a couple of different aspects of this plugin. So this one is called the Vintage Amp Room. So I've pulled up this Vintage Amp Room plugin. It allows you to choose between three different types of amplifier models. We've got a Marshall type here, a Fender type here, and a Vox AC30 type here. I'm going to try all three because I just, you know, I'm curious, I want to hear what they sound like. But really what I'm after is not a whole lot of gain here because I don't want to add much distortion to this signal. It's already distorted enough and I think any more distortion on this signal is just going to be too much. Let's just flip through the amps real quick and see what they sound like. So this is the Marshall type. You saw and heard me adjusting a couple of things in here as I listened. It was really bright and very bitey at first, so I reduced the presence, I reduced the mid-range, I reduced the treble, and then I brought the preamp down because it was just too much distortion. And because I needed a little bit more level after I brought the preamp down, I brought the master up. I'm not sure this is the one I want, so let's move on to the Fender type and see if that is closer to what we're looking for. I don't know if that's the tone I'm looking for, and I really can't change the gain structure on this one. It doesn't have like an input drive knob that I can change. And it's not really adding all that much distortion, but you know what I heard in here? When I flipped on the vibrato and played with the speed and the intensity, I started to get the feel that that might be a cool thing, so we might come back to that. But I do want to try this Vox model first, try all my options, make sure that I don't leave any stone unturned, right? Let's take a listen to this one. As much as I like that vibrato on the Fender type amplifier, I think I like this one better. It's kind of like it's a little deeper, it's a little wider. It's not really adding much distortion here to the tone, but it is making a little bit bitey. I think I'm going to stick with this one. I'm probably going to end up adding a little bit of EQ afterwards to this to tame down that mid-range, just make it a little bit warmer. I know warm is subjective, but maybe a little bit less bright or a little bit less bitey. After adding this vibrato, I want to make it even a little bit more interesting. You know, a lot of times what guitarists will use in their rigs, and then sometimes we add it during mixing, is a delay. I think tube delays work especially well on guitars because they, they have a little, you know, fuzz and vintage kind of character of their own. After this amplifier, I'm going to go ahead and insert a tube delay and see if we can get this guitar to ring a little bit more. After all, that's what you want on an electric guitar like this. It's got to bloom. It has to have like a ringing sound, and I think that's what's going to work best in this mix. With this tube delay, I've got some controls here and they are wet and dry controls. I'm gonna start off completely dry and then just sort of add the delay to taste as I go along. I'm gonna tempo sync this to my session so that my delays are in time with the song. Uh, let's choose quarter notes and let's just see how that sounds. Okay, we've got to be careful with this plugin because that also adds drive to the sound. And I don't really want to add that much more drive to the sound. We're lucky we live in digital audio workstation land and I can move this plugin before the amp. And you know, that actually kind of makes sense because 
Some guitar players will play with a tube or a solid state delay. Right from their guitar, they'll go into that delay, and then from that delay, they'll go into the amp. So this kind of makes sense to how it would work in the real world, right? So let's try it. What this is going to do also is going to allow me the opportunity to maybe back down some gain going into the amplifier so we're not doubling up on our gain structure here. I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get it too distorted. I'm going to put both of these plugins up at once because they're going to be interacting with each other just a little bit. And so I kind of want to see them both at the same time. So I am going to turn down this gain just a little bit. I'm going to turn down the drive on my delay. I'm going to take off some of the top end of the delay. And let's try that out. That certainly changed the sound an awful lot. I'm going to go ahead and bypass this delay and just see what the difference was before and after adding it. Make sure it's what I want. Okay, I'm not really feeling that. So in this case, I, I do want to use this delay because I like the tone of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up as an auxiliary send and return instead of putting it right on the track. So it's just a different way to use it so that we can add as much or a little delay as we want to. So I'm going to put it over here instead. And because we have this on an auxiliary send and return, I'm going to set the mix to 100% wet. Solo safety my channel. Set up a bus input. 17 looks pretty good. How about that? I'm going to rename that to guitar delay. How about that? Naming stuff. What a concept. So now I can add just as much or just as little of that delay as I want to and control a little bit better. Did you notice what I did there? I panned the delay a little bit to the left and I panned the guitar a little bit more to the right. That's kind of an old school trick with mixing guitars where you can use short delays or even a little bit longer delays and pan them in opposite directions of the guitar so that you can create a stereo field for the guitar. I think that works an awful lot better. I am going to darken that delay just a little bit and try it one more time. But I think it works a lot better on a send and return than it does working right on that channel. get a little bit more feedback. I'm going to turn the delay off and I'm going to put it on halfway through that little guitar pass right there and you'll hear the difference. Now you could use simple delays like that, or you can really even make it crazy. We can add a whole lot to that. Let's see what it sounds like with just tons of delay. You too got away with it. Maybe I can too. You saw and you heard when I turned that feedback up while I was listening back, it started doing this crazy thing. That's called regeneration. It's where the delay feeds back into itself and it just starts looping around and you get this sort of crazy sound. That was a feature of old tape echoes too. You could do these really crazy long delay things. So have fun with that and you can automate that if you want to. But for the purposes of this mix, we just want that delay just as it was. The guitar is already sounding a lot more interesting. But one thing that's bothering me just a little bit is I think that guitar is still too bitey in the mid-range. So what do we do? Put up an EQ, and I'm going to go for old trusty here, my Trident A range. I use the Trident A range because it's got a lot of options on it. There's four different bands. I have high pass and low pass, and there's even saturation on it. In this case, I don't want the saturation because I've already got it on the guitar. But I'm going to go ahead and shoot for well, right around 2K, and I'm going to take some of that out. I'm going to start taking it out as I'm listening to it until that mid-range honkiness gets sorted out a bit.
can see I also took out a whole bunch of 3K, so it's that band in there, it's between like 1.5 and maybe 2.5. I think taking a good bit of that out actually helps us soften the guitar a lot. We have one more thing to play with that I didn't get to do yet, and that is the position of the microphone on the amplifier in the Vintage Amp Room Simulator. So listen to what happens when I pull this thing back. This can also have the effect of softening the sound a little bit, and I'm, I'm betting that this is gonna be this is going to be the final nail in the coffin that's going to put this guitar in the right place for me. Can you hear that? It had the effect of putting a little bit of air between the microphone and the amplifier itself. It makes it sound more distant, but for this mix, I think that's really what I want. I want a, like a bigger sound. I want it to sound like there's more air in it. Because this guitar is not like a lead guitar, it's more like a pad sound where it's going to be supporting other instruments in the mix. Taken together, I think all these three things, I, we made this guitar sound radically different. How can we tell? Guess what? We got bypass switches. So let's put that into bypass and listen to the way it was before we started messing with it. whole different thing. So we're gonna play it back one more time and I'm gonna add these things one by one. First I'll put the amp simulator with the tremolo on and then the Trident EQ and then we'll put the delay back on and you're gonna hear the final result. Well, that guitar certainly sounds very different from what we started out with. You don't have to be stuck with a guitar sound that was recorded in a very specific way where they committed to the sound of the amp and the mic and the effects that are on it. You can do a whole bunch of stuff to change the guitar sound pretty dramatically. These tools, when taken together, can give you the ability to make your guitar fit in the mix in a way that no other tools can. So try those tips out and see if they can help you fit your guitar into your mix in an exciting way.